As with our lives, the heart has its rhythm. It begins with relaxation and dilation. The heart's chambers are first filled with blood. That's the diastolic beat. Then there is the systolic thump, the rhythmic contraction of the heart that pumps blood into our arteries. The 10 days of repentance also has its rhythm, a cadence of systolic and diastolic beats, contraction and tension, release and relaxation, a pulse that emanates from the heart of our liturgy. Tonight begins the seventh day of Elul, this month leading to the high holy days, a month of introspection and cheshbon ha-nefesh, of taking an account of our souls. In this mode of preparation for the high holy days, at this and at the next three Shabbatot, my colleagues and I will give divrei Torah about a piece of our liturgy. Rabbi Prosnit will speak about Avinu Malkenu. Rabbi Wadenmaker will teach about Kol Nidre. On the Friday before Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Weissman will explore the Vidui, the personal and communal confession that we offer on Yom Kippur. Tonight, I'm going to speak about the heart of the High Holy Day Liturgy. The heart of our liturgy has a name. It's called the Unatana Tokef, designed to knock you off center, to give you a tightening feeling in the chest. The Unatana Tokev is definitively systolic. You might recognize the Unatana Tokev from this litany. On Rosh Hashanah it is written. On Yom Kippur it is sealed. How many shall leave this world and how many shall be born into it? Who shall live and who shall die? Who shall perish by fire and who by water? Who by sword and who by beast? Who shall rest and who shall wander? Who shall be at peace and who shall be tormented? Who shall be poor and who shall be rich? Who shall be humbled and who shall be exalted? But repentance, prayer, and tzedakah temper the severity of the decree. The Unatana Tokev presents an image of a god who sits in judgment and writes epigraphs and epitaphs. Just to be clear, an epigraph is a motto or quotation at the beginning of a story that sets the tone for what is to come. An epitaph is what is written on a gravestone, words commemorating the dead. Epigraphs and epitaphs, who shall live? and who shall die. We each hope that this new year will simply mark a new chapter in our unfolding stories. But for someone, this year might mark the end. Someone's book will close and it will be left to the rest of us to sum up, sum up that person's story. Who shall be at peace and who shall be tormented? We rarely read the English translation of the Unatana Tokev during our services. When I was a kid, we'd read it all the time. We rarely read the English aloud, for the words of the Unatana Tokev can cause heart palpitations. Who is this unmerciful God that during the 10 days of repentance fixes my fate for the coming year? And all I can do is blunt the severity of the decree? What does that mean? I won't be quite as poor, the fire won't be so hot, my death will be quick and painless. This Byzantine liturgical poem can feel, well, Byzantine, foreign, complicated, outdated. On Rosh Hashanah, when we encounter the Unatana Tokif's description of God, many of us, understandably, harden our hearts to it. We can't get our heads around these words. They are foreign and scary. It's so hard to take these words to heart because the heart of our liturgy is a heart that's too hard to hold. But I think the writer of the Unatana Tokev 
was incredibly wise and created an eternally relevant, powerful opportunity to focus our hearts on our vulnerability and the limits of our power. If that Byzantine liturgist were to meet any of us, he'd think we have godlike power. It says in the Tanakh that God fixes the boundaries of this world, the lands of every nation. God did it with language. Through our power, we move oceans, melt glaciers, raise temperatures. Like the God of Genesis, we too cause dry land to emerge where once there was water. And like the God of the Tanakh, we have the power to affect liberation. And with our godlike power, we add to the number that will enter into this world in the coming year and delay to another day the leave-taking from this world of those who are ready to move on. Using our scientific prowess, we create life. We sustain life. We give life. But despite all of this power, this world can rip your heart out or at least give you an arrhythmia. I think of the horrific accidents and the almosts and the near misses, the floods and tornadoes, and what insurance companies call acts of God. I think, too, of the friend's tumor that was declared inoperable by the best surgeons. And like you, this past year I saw bad individuals become exalted and righteous people become humbled. Now, were all of these events preordained? Were they declared, inscribed by God during last year's high holy days? I don't think so. These, though, are the heart-wrenching events that expose the hair's breadth separating our power from our vulnerability. The Jew who wrote the Unatana Tokev believed that the world was flat and that our lungs and not our hearts pump the blood that circulates through our bodies. Yet he understood human power and its limitations, what we control within our ever-spinning world. Our power is declared in the first words of his poem, Unatana Tokev Kedushat Hayom. The word Tokev means validity or authority. Unatana Tokev Kedushat Hayom. We give validity to the holiness of Rosh Hashanah and of Yom Kippur. We declare the power of those days, not God. We declare the sanctity of the 10 days of repentance. It is our construct. What will happen during those 10 days is our creation. These are our rituals for coping with what we've done, the actions that we have taken, as we steal ourselves for what comes next. And the image of a judging God writing epitaphs and epigraphs. That's the poet's construct, the way of saying that it's not all up to us. The Unatana Tokev is less about fate than it is about control, something we all seek. We all seek power of some sort, for that is human. We all hope that our lives will unfold in particular ways, and we take actions to make it so, because that's human too. And the Unatana Tokef is a heart-stopping reminder that it's not all in our hands. It is a litany whose very purpose is to awaken us to our fear, to pierce our sense of well-being. Chanting together, we admit out loud that having godlike power is still not enough to protect us, both from the unknown and from ourselves and what we choose to do with power. The heart of our liturgy pushes us to stand in the hair's breadth between power and vulnerability. But the writer of the Unatana Tokef wasn't a fatalist. He offers us a way to be in this world, despite the horror, the fear, despite the unknown and uncontrollable. He vouches with conviction for only one way to be. Here's what to do. Teshuvah, tefillah, tzedakah repentance, prayer, and tzedakah. It's too simple to say that tzedakah, tzedakah is charity or good deeds. 
It's so much bigger than that. Tzedakah means proper action and righteous activity. Tzedakah means loving the stranger. It means to have a heart bursting from the constant pursuit of peace. It means to walk on this earth with humility and to move ourselves from this present reality towards something much, much better. During the 10 days of repentance, our liturgy provides us the opportunity to write an epigraph for the coming year. If God can write them, so can we. So what will you write? And please remember, who knows? We just don't know. But our epigraphs might become our epitaphs. So compose something good. Let it speak of caring, of love, of generosity. Let it reflect the wisdom that you have accumulated during your life. We live in a world that can cause our hearts to constrict, to harden with fear, with despair, with hatred. Or despite the terror, despite our continual discovery of new ways to abuse our power, despite everything, our hearts can pound with the pulse of righteousness. And that decision is in our hands. Shabbat Shalom.